Get ready for six tales starring six Robert E. Howard characters who face challenges from humans, monsters, and more, all under the unblinking eye of the Black Stone. From the forests of ancient Samaria to the desert of 20th century Arabia, who will survive and what price will they pay? Let's find out in The Savage Sword of Conan number 4 from Titan Comics. See you in three. Welcome back to Comical Opinions. This is our review of The Savage Sword of Conan number 4. Oh boy, good gravy on a biscuit. <laughs> Why can't every anthology be this good? We're used to singing the high praises of the Conan story since Titan took over the license from Marvel, but this anthology is almost scarily good. Contrary to the title, you get a whole host of Robert E. Howard characters to tickle your pulp-loving fancy. So if you haven't guessed by now, this comic is a winner. As with all of our anthology reviews, we're going to tackle each short in kind. So this review is going to be a little bit longer than normal, but stick with us. It's going to be worth it. We're going to start off with Birthright in Black. Conan stalks the woods near Pictish territory when he's overcome by a vision of the Blackstone's influence in a dark-eyed sigil. The eye transforms him into a primitive man confronted by a tribe of enemies, leading to a brutal fight for survival. Conan eventually prevails, but is then tempted by delights and pleasures that would appeal to any hot-blooded warrior. Through the vision, Conan recognizes the tests and temptations of the Blackstone's influence. He shakes it off to resist the dread power and steel himself for the challenge to come. This first short is really more of a vignette or a prologue than a full-on story, but that's okay because it works darn well. Writer Jim Zub and artist Fernando Dagnino deliver a powerful teaser to the forthcoming next volume in the main Conan the Barbarian title from Titan. Zub captures the grim determination in Conan to set the stage for whatever evil awaits, and Dagnino's brooding art is magnificent. But what you'll find throughout the rest of the short stories in this anthology is the prevalence or the appearance, at least in the background, of the Blackstone sigil in the form of an eye. The next story is Blood from a Stone. Solomon Cain travels with a group of mercenaries and loyalists of the Holy Roman Emperor Ferdinand I against Turkish supply chains during the conflict against the Ottoman War. After a relatively successful series of raids, the group's luck runs out. Now they're on the run from relentless Turkish soldiers. Captain Kodaly leads the raiders through precarious trails and deep woods into the forests of Transylvania for a night's rest. In the early hours, the raiders were ambushed by Turkish soldiers, but Solomon noticed the man on the watch was quietly killed during the night and had his heart removed. When Solomon and the only other survivor break through the forest into a clearing, they see Captain Kodaly offering a fresh heart to an otherworldly obelisk made of black stone. Soon, a dark beast enters our world via Kodaly's offering to unleash hell on earth. Patrick Zercher's one and done story is a pulp fantasy reader's dream on multiple levels. First, Solomon King keeps his wits about him in a heroic fashion during the midst of a horrific battle between men and a very large monster. Second, Zercher's detailed and cinematic art style looks amazing. And third, the means by which the monster is brought forth, the Black Stone, forms a connection line between Solomon Kane and Conan to confirm the possibility of crossovers, connections with other Robert E. Howard characters, which occur in this anthology, and many more challenges that echo Lovecraftian lore. That brings us to Ever and Never Beyond. Brissa, Conan's sometimes Pictish companion and tracker, embarks on her own adventure. During the final battle in Conan the Barbarian number 6, Brissa and Conan are separated within the Black Citadel. Now we see Brissa chose to fight rather than flee, and during her combat against the undead, the ground gave way, tossing her into the same brackish pool where Conan nearly met his end. There, Brissa received a vision from a loving face telling her to forge a new path. When Brissa awakes, she finds a new adventure waiting, but not in the time or place she expected. Writer Jim Zub and artist Dean Kotz deliver another strong teaser slash prologue that bridges the gap between the first Conan the Barbarian arc from Titan and Brissa's return in the forthcoming Battle of the Black Stone storyline. We won't spoil the big twist on the last panel, but a sure bet that you'll never guess where Brissa winds up. That brings us to the short story Horror from the Tomb. Professor John Kirwan and John Conrad are summoned to Egypt in 1935 when treasure-hunting acquaintances of theirs, two gentlemen by the name of Brill and O'Donnell, report a mysterious find that predates Egypt. Skeptical, the archaeological adventurers arrive to find the excavation camp abandoned. Brill is dead, and otherworldly chanting comes from the darkened chamber beneath the tomb. The horrors they find beneath the sands of the desert will haunt them for years to come. Now we're digging into some really deep Robert E. Howard cuts. 
Writer Jeffrey Shanks and artist Eric Donovan resurrect Robert E. Howard's proto-Indiana Jones characters for a classic pulp serial adventure that reinvigorates the characters for new audiences, which is a good thing. Kirwan and Conrad were part of Robert E. Howard's contribution to Lovecraftian lore, so their inclusion in this anthology and the appearances of the Black Stone makes perfect sense. Shanks crafts an engaging adventure that just might prompt readers to go back and read Kirwan and Conrad's original stories. The next story in this anthology is titled Matrimony. Dark Agnes de Chestillon walks through the countryside as she waits for her partner in crime, Etienne, to arrive for the next leg of their journey. Through the woods, Agnes sees a gothic estate belonging to Duke Ilya Kersonovich, an estate laden with ancient treasures and baubles ripe for the thieving. Agnes decides to sneak in and look for a few priceless items to pluck while nobody notices, but she's quickly surprised by the Duke, who casts a spell of sleep on Dark Agnes. When the swashbuckling adventurer wakes up, she's with the family of her youth and preparing for her wedding day. However, nothing is as it seems. Fred Kennedy's tale of sorcery and evil hits the bullseye with another lesser-known Robert E. Howard character, who gets entangled in dark rituals that only her wits and prowess with weapons can save her from. Further, Andy Bellinger's art is surprisingly detailed and energetic. But the overlarge manga-inspired eyes on Agnes may seem a little out of place in this issue. It's a small quibble and it's a small art detail from the creative choice point of view, but you do notice it and it seems a little strange. That brings us to the final short in this anthology titled Black Oasis. Francis Xavier Gordon, otherwise known as El Barak, is enlisted by a chieftain to rescue his son who was kidnapped by a rival desert tribe. After the rescue succeeds, the flight from the kidnappers begins. El Barak and his charge are forced to take refuge in a blasphemous ancient temple that men avoid whenever possible. It isn't long before six of their pursuers catch up to El Barak within the temple. What follows is a miraculous fight to the death beneath the all-seeing eye of the Blackstone sigil on a nearby wall. Writer Ra Mars takes a pulp adventure and gives it a foreboding twist when the temple where El Barak takes refuge links the story of yet another lesser-known Robert E. Howard character to the Blackstone. Readers unfamiliar with El Barak will enjoy this introduction to the Arabian-based gunfighter from Texas. Plus, Mike Perkins' art looks fantastic here. As a side note, we've encountered Mike Perkins' art style several times at DC Comics, and we believe, from what we can see here, his brand of visual storytelling works much better in black and white. Overall, The Savage Sword of Conan No. 4 is a feast for Robert E. Howard lovers everywhere as the collective of creators achieve pulp adventure greatness with familiar and not-so-familiar Howard characters. There isn't a bad story in the bunch. All the artists brought their A-game, and this anthology just might prompt new readers to explore the broader collection of Howard's characters beyond just Conan and Solomon Kane, which is always a good thing. Let's take a step back and look at the bigger picture of where this title fits in with the rest of the series. If it wasn't obvious from the plot analysis, the connective tissue in this anthology is the eye sigil of the Black Stone, first seen in Conan the Barbarian number one. In some cases, the Black Stone is a prevalent force. In others, the sigil lingers in the background, but the net effect is a sense of continuity that stretches across time and space, which makes each story feel bigger and part of a grander whole. Final thoughts, what do you think about the Savage Sword of Conan number four? It's a pulp adventure lover's dream as a cavalcade of creators regale readers with short tales of popular and lesser known Robert E. Howard characters. The Black Stone provides a connective tissue that links the stories across all time and space and reality, forming, I don't know what you would call it, a Howard verse, maybe? But this turns out to be one of the best anthologies we've read in years. Therefore, The Savage Sword of Conan number 4 earns a 9.8 out of 10. Honestly, I can't get over how thoroughly entertained I was with each and every short in this anthology. But what do you think? Do you prefer the colorized traditional Conan comic or do you like the black and white magazine sized anthology series which includes other Robert E. Howard characters? Give us a thumbs up if you're a Robert E. Howard fan and leave us a comment below with which Howard character warrants their own one shot or mini-series. That's a good way to start. Also, remember to click on the link in the description to read the written review and buy this comic to help support the channel. That would be very much appreciated. So, thank you very much for joining, and stay tuned through the outro for more reviews just like this one.